eccentric training for hypermobility syndromes and EDS. Now, what is eccentric training? We have three parts of the muscle contraction that you're going to want to understand. So we have the concentric where the muscle shortens. So if I were to flex my bicep, that would be the concentric. And eccentric is the lengthening. So at that control that happens as you start to bring your arm straight, that that muscle is still responsible for. And then we have isometric. So if I'm holding a grocery bag still, the muscle does not change in length. With EDS, we look at the control component that helps keep the joint in the socket. So whether we're thinking about uh, shoulders or hips or fingers, we have to have that eccentric control to help control it from subluxing. So for an example, a lot of people talk about shoulder subluxations. If I were to bring something down, so if I put a book on a shelf and I start to bring it down, that lowering of the book is the eccentric component. So if I don't have that control, it's likely that the muscle fibers won't grab strong enough and it can actually result in a subluxation. Not meaning that it causes a subluxation, it means that if we don't have that stability in that joint, then it's possible that a lot of these movements or that hypermobility may accentuate more and come out of that or partially out of that socket. So when we think about eccentric training, a lot of people really focus on the concentric, meaning the shortening of the muscle. So you see people at the gym doing this, right? That's not really beneficial for everyone. Uh, it might build a little bit of strength, but it's not going to build stability, which is more likely for those people to have an injury in the future. With EDS, if you start to train the eccentric component, it helps you gain the strength to do the concentric component. Uh, there's a term that's used, the negative. So you see people, if they're doing a bench press, the lowering of that weight is a lot harder than pushing it back up for a reason, right? We break down the muscle twice as much. And when we're thinking about strength training for EDS1, it's safer because you're not jolting or shortening that muscle that can potentially pull a joint out of socket is with the eccentric part. Now you're getting control. So now you're getting activation throughout that entire cycle making sure that that joint is stabilized in that joint, whether it's a shoulder, elbow, hip, whatever it might be. So when you start to think about eccentric training, we have to think about where are we going to start when we start strength training and where we want to end up. So where we want to start is essentially the control. Where we want to end is the power movement of it. Whereas if I want to lift and put a book on the shelf, that is technically more of a power movement to get it up versus the controlling the book back down. So what we're going to do is a bicep curl. This would normally be a weight, but I'm just going to show you the mechanics. So what I'm going to do is have something light. So if I'm curling this up, my focus is on one, two, three, four. If someone needs to help me bring it back up, one, two, three, four, or you do this component, but then really focus on the way down. Now, the thing I want to point out is that the concentric or the shortening of the muscle is not something that puts you at higher risk for injury. It just means that that part of the muscle contraction is not as important as the lowering component. So you can still perform this motion, but it's more likely that training this part first is going to be more beneficial to provide more stability in that area in preparation for more advanced exercises that require more of a concentric movement.